You're welcome back. It's still uh, the breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. Remember that we did say that the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people, otherwise known as Mosok, has alleged the misappropriation of over $800 million meant for the cleanup of Ogoni polluted land. I must have urged President Tinubu to immediately set up a panel to probe the mismanagement of the said fund, calling for the immediate dis dissolution of all governing structures of the project. Now, who was given the project? How uh, was it monitored? Uh, what is the state of this project? What can be done to make sure uh, that these people, uh, perpetrators of this act, if it is true, are brought to book? We have a guest uh, that will be talking to us on the issue, and he is Dr. Law Mefo, he's a political analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you. Good morning, my brother. Thank you for hosting me. Okay, uh, $800 million is quite a lump sum. Now, the MOSOP is saying that it was misappropriated. Let's first of all get your comment on that. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if um, the allegation is true, uh, because um, the, the entire interventions we have had uh, in the uh, Niger Delta generally since uh, 1999 um, have uh, not uh, really yielded uh, the desired end results. If, if you look at uh, what um, has uh, been uh, happening in a place like uh, NNBC, um, you would get to see that um, what they are also alleging and uh, that has happened uh, in uh, the Ogune cleanup exercise may not be far from the truth. And um, you see, the amount, the amount in, in question is quite homogeneous. And uh, if you recall, um, uh, uh, President uh, Muhammad Buhari, as he then was, you know, um, he signed it to this um, Ogoni cleanup exercise very early in his administration. Uh, one year into his administration, he was uh, committed to it, and uh, funds uh, have been uh, released. But the information we get from that zone doesn't uh, suggest that um, not, not that much is being done to really justify the amount of money uh, that has been released. So I think the call made uh, by the president of um, Mosop, uh, uh, Mr. Suke, I think uh, I think uh, the call is uh, is important. Uh, I may I may not agree totally with um, uh, the call uh, for the dissolution of uh, uh, all the structures of. Um, that the uh, hydrocarbon uh, remediation uh, project. Uh, because when you say dissolution, after the proof that you are calling for, you now go back to reconstitute, you don't. What you need to do is to suspend a uh, further spending. And uh, what, what that means is that uh, the structure uh, has already constituted, it should be there while uh, the funds are approved. It's important to know where the money has gone to. And uh, if any work has been done at all, is it really commensurate to the amount of money released to that effect? I believe this is important. And um, if you look at it, you see it, it goes uh, even beyond the, the uh, Hydrocarbon um, Remediation Agency, uh, otherwise uh, better known as uh, the Okuni Cleanup uh, uh, Project. I, I, th I think uh, it's, uh, it's um, something that should worry everybody. Um, because if you read down the uh, press uh, statement issued by Mr. Ansuke, the president of Mosa, you will see that uh, he also talked about uh, additional uh, 180 billion naira that was uh, released uh, just uh, uh, three weeks to the end or expiration of the presidency of uh, Muhammad Buhari. You recall that um, in the last three weeks of uh, the Muhammad Buhari presidency, there was a kind of frenzy to uh, award the contracts uh, as if uh, there will be no tomorrow. So much frenzy all over the place. It became a kind of a contracted bazaar. And um, we saw some of the uh, top officials of uh, the Buhari administration, uh, somebody uh, like um, the former minister of uh, works uh, and, and, and housing, 
fashola, you know, saying that uh, awarding contract till uh, the very last uh, minute of the administration was uh, justified. Well, it has the, it can be justified, but we need to see the urgency. Such an uh, award coming uh, in the twilight of uh, the administration should uh, border on uh, emergency. But they, I, I, I didn't see any emergency in such an award. In other words, they, it was just a meant uh, for settlement to take care of uh, uh, some people, um, what you may call, um, should we say, retirement uh, benefits. You know, they, trying to settle uh, some people that uh, worked in that administration. That is how I see this. So if you if you take it from that perspective, you will see that what uh, Mr. Suke you know said has a lot of merit embedded in it. And um, if uh, you also um, recall uh, the origin and justification, possibly, of um, what you call the Niger Delta militancy, right from uh, the uh, years of uh, Obasanjo uh, to the present day, we all know that um, a neglect of uh, the entire Niger, Niger Delta uh, was at the heart of uh, the reason why you have uh, the militancy you know, really disrupting economic activities, not only in that region, but in the whole country. Now, if you, if you uh, look at uh, the uh, fact that there has been a serious uh, neglect, the question is, uh, are we saying that Nigeria as a country has not done anything at all to uh, take care of uh, the Niger Delta as the golden... Uh, as the as the goose that lays the golden egg, I don't think it would be right to say that the Nigerian nation has not done um, anything substantial to really address uh, the problem of uh, the region. If you look at uh, the uh, various uh, um, bodies put in place to uh, deal with uh, the peculiarities of uh, the Niger Delta and, of course, uh, environmental degradation occasioned uh, uh, or occasioning from uh, um, uh, crude oil uh, exploration in the region, right from Umpadek. In fact, there was even a body before Umpadek, one board, I can't remember the full name now. From Umpadek, you now have an NNDC and all that. Go and check their records of delivery. You will see, you know, you will see trillions popped into the region without uh, much to show for it, because we expect that such a trillions should be addressing the um, question of uh, what uh, life in the Niger Delta after oil. Yeah, Mr. Lefo, we, we, just, just yes. a moment. Uh, I agree with you that the, the, the country has done a lot for the region, the Niger Delta region. We've seen humongous amounts of money being spent on the Niger Delta region. So if money is not the problem, where is our problem lying? Where are we getting it wrong? How, we cannot continue spending so much money and not getting results. Why do you think these results are not coming? Yeah, you see, um, first and foremost, you have what you call an elite a conspiracy. Uh, Nigerian a political elites could be the worst that could be found anywhere in the world. They are so corrupt. They are not interested in a common good. That's just the gospel truth. Because if you go to Niger Delta, the, uh, uh, the, the, the leadership is often uh, uh, spearheaded by you know, people from uh, the region. You know, the MD, chairman of the board and all that. You know, even the uh, Ministry of, um, of uh, Niger Delta you know, has uh, also been led by uh, Niger Delta people. So you expect that they should be able to see this as their own, their own project, their own problem. They you know, really stand in the gap on behalf of their people. But this is not what you see. So the, you can see that embedded corruption in our system is you know, the foundation of uh, the problem we're having in uh, not only in uh, the Niger Delta region, but the entire country. You know, corruption, lack of accountability, impunity, People hijack common resources. People hijack it because they know that nothing will happen. There is a document I don't know if you have seen. The document was recently released by um, 
uh, Femi Falana, senior advocate of Nigeria. He pointed, he, he, he explained, he was able to excavate minimum of 23 areas where money has either been stolen, you know, mismanaged, you know, things like that. He, the, the document is out there. If you haven't seen it, I'll forward it to you after this program. And you know, he 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 pointed out, you know, these areas and NDC uh, and the uh, Niger Delta uh, misappropriation is one of them. So it should not be even treated in isolation. They call for proof of um, uh, uh, the uh, what has happened to open the cleanup is not even enough. It should be extended to the entire uh, 23 areas identified by the senior advocate of Nigeria. Take, for instance, what has happened to uh, NNPC. They were involved in what you call a um, crude um, a swap. They were giving a refiner's crude and they turn, return a, a taking a fuel from, a, from them in exchange for the crude they have given. Yet Nigeria is committing over 10 trillion to fuel subsidy. So where, what, what happened? If you give your product in trade by butter, is money still involved? So you discover that it's not just the Niger Delta, what has happened in Niger Delta, or Oguni cleanup. Yes, they can start, the president can start from there, but uh, he has to extend it to the entire 23 areas identified by uh, the senior advocate of Nigeria, Fem Falana. And it's very simple. Just in, invite international uh, forensic auditors. And they will give you the, the they will give you a, a clear picture of what has happened. Very simple. But again, remember that NNDC um, it was subjected to the same uh, international forensic audit about two years ago. Where is the report? You know, so there are no consequences for actions. You know, in Nigeria, where is the report? You know, the former president sat on it. He did not implement it until he left. So you have a problem in Nigeria. The problem is corruption. And corruption is a, a, a byproduct of impunity, lack of accountability. You know, when, what I mean by lack of accountability is that, you know, people get away with almost everything. The, the, the laws are there, but nobody's implemented those laws. Nobody is enforcing those laws. Nigeria has some of the best policies, some of the best laws you can find anywhere in the world. So it's not absence of, of regulation. It, it's not absence of laws, it's absence of regulation, absence of enforcement. And who would lead the enforcement? The president of the country. I gave an example of the forensic audit of NNDC. Ordinarily, the Ogoni cleanup should be part of the responsibility of NNDC. But they didn't do it. Then we had to bring in uh, a special uh, proposed vehicle which uh, they call the, the hydro, hydrocarbon uh, remediation uh, project. Yes, he, he brought that in very, very noble patriotic intervention, but you released money and nobody is made to account for the money that, that, that has been released for such projects. You know, so even the NNDC forensic audit uh, that is more than two years old now, uh, has not been uh, um, implemented. What is the guarantee that um, the probe of uh, the of the hydrocarbon remediation project will uh, see the light of the day? You know, but because we have a new president, you know, and the new who is confronted um, by new circumstances, maybe things will be different. Look at the way um, the president abruptly removed uh, the first subsidy. Why did he do that? He did that because there were, he, he, he met an empty well. The, the coffers were completely empty, nothing. So there was no way he could even contemplate uh, um, a proceeding for a month or two in, a, uh, uh, in a, uh, implementing for that, the, the first subsidy removal. You know, so you can see that it's uh, between the rock and the hard place. You know, it, it, it's, a very, it's a very terrible situation. And the and president the, the Timbu needs to understand that the solution to the nation's problem is not transferring the body, this body, to Nigerian masses who are not only suffering from dying in droves. It is 
really taking the battle to the elites that stole trillions from Nigeria. Use their calculator and they convert 800 million uh, to Naira in a current exchange rate. The figure it will give you will surprise you if your calculator is able to carry it. But you know, nobody is saying anything about it. The 180 billion released three weeks to the expiration of uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari's uh, presidency. Nobody knows what has happened to that. For some people, it is their own uh, settlement, you know, is is their own uh, 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 severance allowance. That is how it is said in public service, severance. So you have to find a way uh, uh, to bring out the money and hand it over to a group of people. Dr. So Mefford. Just a Criminal moment. I should, be, I, should, I should be dealt with. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you, you've mentioned some of the solutions the way you think. Um, from this uh, story of the hydrocarbon pollution remediation project, which are, they're calling HIREP, uh, we hear that uh, 200 million uh, could not be accounted for. But you g gave a solution that one of the things that the president or the government needs to do is maybe bring in forensic uh, auditors from somewhere else to come and do that. But do you think the present administration will have the will to do something like that? Will they implement it? Do they trust foreign uh, bodies that come to do forensic audit of anything? Because just a few hours ago, let me call it a few hours ago, we heard the EU report about the INEC. And instead of the government, as a lot of people expected them to do, uh, to say, okay, we see that some of the areas uh, our electoral body may not have done well. We'll see how we can improve on it. But they condemned that report outrightly, that the EU was just doing a lazy man's uh, dex job and they didn't have any information. And the election was the freest and the fairest and the best election ever in the country. Do you think an administration like that will believe what forensic auditors will say, no matter where they come from? Because they don't seem to trust anything that is not remotely uh, beneficial to the present administration. Yeah, it is a pathetic and um, very, very pathetic, the picture you have painted. You see, I recall in 2007, when uh, Omar Rumusa was elected president, mm. he repudiated the election that brought it to power. He, he said that the election was seriously flawed and set up the WISE committee uh, to do uh, some work uh, to ensure a proper election in Nigeria. You know, that's a gentleman. But... Uh, he, he compared to what uh, Tenugu and his team are doing at the moment. He, he's, um, he, he becomes uh, something uh, of uh, the opposite. Because um, I read uh, the EU uh, report, and I, I didn't see anything new. What the EU report is saying is what we have all, all known. There is no nothing new. And it is not only the position of the EU. That has been the position of all the international observers. Maybe the EU went a, a little further to identify some specifics and then offer remedies. Look, Nigerians need to understand that EU has every right to be interested in uh, this election. Why? They committed 49 million you know, dollars, either dollars, pounds, or euro to this project. You know, that runs into billions when converted to Naira. So if, they, if, they, if you could take money from them, to organize an election in Nigeria, then you owe them explanation as said uh, regards uh, what happened uh, to the project that they invested in. That is the justification of their of their uh, um, uh, uh, should I say incursion? I wouldn't even say it is incursion because they 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 committed to the project 2023 general elections in Nigeria and therefore deserve to know what really happened. And they sent in observers, up to 50 of them, and they, they saw things firsthand for themselves. You know, so uh, uh, yes, I, uh, I neck started off very well. You know, uh, I, uh, the uh, Beavers did a great job of identification, verification, and all that. But you, the, uh, at the same INEC refused to upload presidential res election results, you know, despite uploading Senate and the House of Reps results that took place, got collected at the same time, the same polling units. 
So if you say that Senate work, House of Reps work, work and the and the um, pres okay. presidential election uh, couldn't um, be uploaded, yeah. something becomes efficient, right. even if it is true, All because right. it is the same portal. It is the same portal. It is the same election. It is the same the same collation All right, Dr. The moment Dr. and time. It's just that you have three. You have three resource sheets, and the three resource sheets out of the three you uploaded two. I refused to. Upload the other one. one did not work. Okay, well, <laughs> let's go back. Let me summarize. Let me summarize something. Just briefly, here. yes. You know, mm. my summary is this: You see, um, people doesn't have much choice. That's a fact. It doesn't have much choice because the, the, the Nigeria is broke. Let's put it that way. And all he is doing now is to tax Nigerians. You remove fuel subsidy. You remove a subsidy on electricity. You want us to pay 7.5% uh, on that. Everything, you know, we'll consume will now be 7.5. You know, it's not stopping there. The, 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 the administration is imposing more and more tax. Even the, the proof of ownership that you do once and for all, you now have to do it annually. Yeah, and yeah. they are projected that they will make over 20 billion out of that. You know, you can see that the government, rather than approach, rather than face the source that have taken trillions out of the treasury, they are trying to transfer the body to the Nigerian masses. But okay. again, if you want to do forensic audit, it, it, nobody in Nigeria will give you will give you proper forensic audit because corruption has eaten into everything. Tinubu has no choice; he has to bring in external forensic auditors and should develop the political will to side with the masses and implement the outcomes of such a forensic audit, audit and their interpretations. Okay, well, um, that would be a good way to uh, uh, keep it. Um, we, if we keep talking about this thing, we will, a day will not be enough for us, but we'd like to thank Believe. you, Dr. Meh, for, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me. Yeah. Dr. Law Have a for, day in Nigeria. <laughs> Dr. Law Mefor is a political analyst, and uh, he was speaking with us, or talking with us, uh, on uh, the mismanagement, the alleged mismanagement of $800 million cleanup fund, uh, as complained by Mossop. We'll take a short break, and we'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>